Salve família! Você que quer fazer intercâmbio e curtir o estilo de vida australiano, lembra de se inscrever no nosso canal e acompanhar o Australian Lifestyle Podcast. <risos> Falar o que, meu amigo? Vai lá! Salve, amigos do Australian Lifestyle! Estamos de volta e dessa vez com um convidado aqui nativo da Austrália, ele que representa Murdoch University e vai ser melhor introduzido pelo Vinícius Barreto. Por favor, Vinícius. Tiago, a gente está com o Daniel Method aqui hoje, que é uma pessoa que conhece muito sobre o sistema é, de universidades aqui na Austrália, trabalha para a Murdoch University, já trabalhou para outras universidades e vai poder aqui nos brindar com muita informação importante para quem pensa em vir para a Austrália, estudar, trabalhar e estudar numa grande instituição como a Murdoch University. Daniel, welcome! Thanks very much for having me. Really excited to be here today. Daniel, uh, could you start talking a little bit about your role at Murdoch University and uh, how you end up working with international education? Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so my role at Murdoch University is as one of uh, a group of regional managers. So we effectively are working as a group across various markets uh, around the globe. So my specialization uh, is Europe and North Central South America, which is how uh, I've joined today's podcast. So it's a, it's a very, very diverse portfolio. Lots of, uh, lots of students with very different uh, but interesting stories about why they want to come and study in Australia. So this is really kind of how I got my start in international education was I was working at another university <clears throat> Uh, here in Perth, uh, and I was relatively fresh out of university. Most of my friends um, at that time were traveling around Europe, so many of them were living in London. So I had, uh, as part of my first job, saved up some money and gone to visit them in London. Kind of did some did some travel in in and around Europe, and kind of came back and had the had the bug. And one of my one of my work colleagues uh, who was working with the international team at that time mentioned to me about a job opening coming up, um, and said I should go and talk to this one particular person. Um, and I did, and here we are, sort of twenty plus years later, uh, sitting on a podcast talking about. So the background of uh, of how I fell into how I fell into international education. So, no real planning, just more blind luck than anything else. Something related to your passion about like getting to know different uh, people and the different countries, uh, traveling, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, a lot of it. I think was born out of that that initial sort of trip to Europe and and being able to see so many different cultures and so many different hear so many different languages. Uh, I was very, very fortunate to be able to do that. And then it's just kind of leapt off the page from there. So any opportunity I've had to be able to travel, whether it's actually internationally or even locally here in Australia, just to, to be part of the international education space, I've tried to take advantage of that. And I like to think it's born, it, it, well, it's provided me with a really, really fulfilling career. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful to, to everyone that's kind of listened to me and believed in me over, over the course of that time. All right. Well, that sounds great, uh, Daniel. How has the student population at Murdoch University evolved over the years? Have you seen any shifts in terms of nationalities or academic interests? Yeah, look, that's a great question, Tiago. Uh, and certainly in my relatively short time at Murdoch, um, I've been here for just over two and a half years. Coming out of the pandemic has been, I think, a really, really significant change um, in the demographics at Murdoch. So for us as an institution, the biggest cohort that we've seen come through has been from Bhutan. So a relatively small country in South Asia. And Over the last, yeah, I guess basically two and a half years since the end of the pandemic, we've been very, very fortunate to host quite a significant number of Bhutanese students who've wanted to come to Australia to improve not only their English, but also their academic prospects, but also to really to go back to Bhutan um, and continue to help develop the country that, that they are very, very proud of. So it's been, I think, a very significant shift 
in where Murdoch has focused its energies. Um, so prior to the pandemic, I think much like many of the other Australian universities, very heavily focused in South Asia. So India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, some parts of Africa um, as well, but certainly more of a traditional recruitment model. Uh, and then obviously post pandemic Bhutan has taken off. Um, we're still seeing strong interest in that South Asia uh, part of the world, but certainly for me, I'm I'm really interested in what's happening in uh, in South America and how we can try and encourage more students to consider Australia as a destination, but more importantly, how they can consider Perth as maybe not quite home, but maybe a home away from home. When you say you no, know, make Perth home away from home, sounds really good. But what are the main benefits that you see uh, for international students to choose Australia and more specifically Western Australia? Yeah, that's a great question. So I guess there's three points that I'd want to touch on very quickly. Um, the first one is the wonderful weather that we enjoy here in Perth. Uh, so dry, hot summers, cool, dry, a little bit of rain winters. It's really, really enjoyable. Lends itself to a fantastic outdoors lifestyle. So if you are interested in being outdoors all of the time, this is a wonderful, wonderful location to be able to bring your family to. And certainly that was one of the considerations when my wife and I were thinking about returning to Perth. So we are both from Perth originally, our families are all here, but we've been living uh, elsewhere in Australia uh, for the best part of the last 12 years. Wow. And when we were coming back, we had children with us. So we were looking at, okay, well, we want to come back, we want to move home, but we also want to be able to get our children into schools and, and know where we want to live. And that's a significant challenge, even for, for us. When we're moving, we were moving back to Perth. We're familiar with the city, but we're not, we weren't, we weren't really sure where we wanted to live or where we want our children to go to school. So that was a challenge for us as locals, um, speaking English as a first language, not having to worry about trying to navigate the challenges of a second language. But I think that's one of the more significant benefits. And the third point that I wanted to raise was Western Australia is the only state in all of Australia that offers free education to the children of students who are studying a master's or a PhD. So for the length of time that you were studying, if you're at Murdoch University, if you're doing a two-year master's, your children, whether they are at primary school or at secondary school, have access to free education. So there's no cost to you as the parent of that child to send your children to school. So it's a really useful benefit when you're thinking about moving to a new location and establishing that as your home away from home, not having to worry about one small part of that transition of moving so far away from everything that you know, and then trying to, I guess, smooth all of the bumps that come with transitioning to a new environment. So I think those are the key benefits I'd like to sort of point out for Western Australia. I'm sure there are a host more that I'm not thinking about right now, but those are the ones that, I, that sprang to mind when you asked that question. If um, you considering to work in Western Australia after you finish your your uh, master's or you know PhD or undergrad, obviously there are some age limitations to that, which we, we can explain uh, later, but you can um, uh, stay in Western Australia an additional year. So like generally it's two years for a graduate visa in Western Australia, you can extend for another year. And students that study in Western Australia, they also obtain extra points, you know, because they study in a regional uh, area uh, towards a skilled migration program. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a really interesting combination that Western Australia has to offer and definitely a place where international students should consider to study. Uh, Thiago, what, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was actually uh, going to ask Daniel uh, about uh, this, you know, because it's a challenge for uh, international students uh, to move away from their home. Uh, I feel this as an international student here uh, in the Gold Coast as well. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you, uh, how does the university work to create that welcoming uh, space uh, or environment for students from diverse backgrounds, you know, uh, feeling those challenges of moving away from home. 
Yeah, it's a tough, it, it really is a tough uh, experience to go through. Um, I'm not alone on this podcast in, 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 I guess, reflecting on my own experiences of, of moving away from home and going through the challenges of, of that. So it's, it, it is, look, it, it's definitely a challenge. I'm, no one's going to ever lie to you. And if they ever say it's really easy, that's, I'm, yeah, I 100% disagree with them because it's not. Even if you think it's going to be easy, it never is. There's always something. So one of the things that Murdoch does really well, I believe, is it prides itself on a sense of community on our campus. So the campus is, whilst very large in actual land size, is very is relatively small by Australian standards from student size. And what that lends itself to is that sense of community that I talked about. So when you come to the Murdoch campus, because of the relatively small size of the student population, I don't want to say everybody knows everybody, but there is very much a sense of welcoming everybody onto the campus, whether it's from day one of oh my God, I've just arrived. I have no idea where I'm going. Who can I ask questions to? To all the way through to the end where it's, hey, you've been here for five years. Congratulations, you're graduating. This is the most amazing thing. What a journey. This is wonderful. So you kind of run the full spectrum of that level of engagement on the campus. And I think Murdoch has always prided itself on that sense of community from its very starting point. It was always built around welcoming in people from diverse backgrounds who perhaps didn't fit into the model of university study at the time that, the, that Murdoch was established, which was in the mid 1970s. So a very left-leaning, I guess, hippie style of culture and the only other university at that time uh, was uh, the University of Western Australia. So a very traditional university by Australian standards. So Murdoch was established with that, not quite counterculture, but certainly a focus on let's not be the University of Western Australia. Let's be our own, let's be our own uh, university with our own culture and our own vibes and our own um, ability to connect not only with our students on our campus but more importantly with the community around the university as well. So being part of a community, mingle with other students from different nationalities are all uh, very important uh, aspects of uh, the life of an international student. But what other tips would you give to someone that is intending to come to Australia? You know, what do you reckon it's important for them to get well prepared for this journey? Ask questions. Um, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, I've learned that over many, many years. It's just, if you're thinking about it, there's probably five or 10 other people who are thinking exactly the same thing. And no one wants to ask the question because they don't want to look stupid. But yeah, it's 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 just it's, it's as simple as that. It's really ask questions. The more questions you ask, the more information you're going to have, the better decision that you can actually make as part of your experience overseas. Because what you think you may want may not necessarily be what you actually want once you start digging into it and unpacking all of that information. Wow, top tip for uh, coming overseas, uh, moving overseas, I think is give yourself time. Time is the biggest obstacle that you're going to face because everything takes time. And as I pointed out before, when you're transitioning to a new environment, even if it's a new city in your own country, Everything's a little bit different. Nothing is quite the same. So just imagine that moving from a country where English is not the native language to a country where English is the native language. And then you're having to think about everything that you're trying to say and how you communicate in that second language. And then understand all of the, the little changes of trying to um, organize a rental accommodation or connect your electricity or connect your Wi-Fi 
or get your children into school or get a driver's license. Everything is different and everything takes time to resolve. So you need to give yourself enough time to be able to comfortably do what you need to do. And people undersell that, I think. So I, I, my, my advice would be give yourself more time than you think you need and it will actually pay off. Even if you have periods of time where you're not doing anything and you're just sitting there waiting, that's still valuable time because something's happening. You just can't see what's actually happening. So it doesn't mean that nothing is happening. It's just out of sight, out of mind. So yeah, I think that would be my tip. Give yourself more time than you think you need and ask lots of questions. There's never that's never going to go never going to go wrong for you. Yeah, it's a it's a particularly uh, important tip, Daniel. Especially now that uh, the Australian government has announced uh, a cap, you know, for uh, the total number of international students in Australia. Uh, how do you think that will impact the application process uh, at Murdoch? Look, we're not anticipating a significant uh, impact, to be perfectly fair. Um, it's all a little bit uncertain at this point in time. But I think from an application standpoint, um, I'm still encouraging students who are thinking about coming to Murdoch, plan ahead at least six to nine months before you want to start with us is the time when you should be looking at lodging your application. That gives you enough time, once again, coming back to that key concept, to finalize your application, get your visa application processed, make the trans, make your plans to transition. So you no, know, we're we're looking at um, our at our application turnaround times have been very very positive this year. Uh, we see no reason that that's going to change next year. Uh, and so yeah, we're we're just I think we're encouraging students to continue with the process that they are following at the moment. Also, just considering making sure that they have they feel comfortable with the time frames that they're working to. There's no need to rush. We're not going anywhere. We're happy to welcome students whenever they want to come and whenever it suits them best. Excellent. That's good. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Giving giving yourself time is essential, right? To make the right decisions. And uh, what what would be uh, that one piece of advice that you could offer to uh, international students considering studying in Australia uh, for how they can make the most out of their experience, Daniel? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I think certainly when I was at university and uh, it was always you go to class, you do what you have to do, you leave and you can kind of keep on moving with your life. I think that's changed quite significantly um, in the last even five years, um, but probably more 10 years. I think university study opens the door to a lot of opportunities. I think the challenge that most students find is they don't want to walk through that door because for many of them, there's other, other competing priorities in their life, whether that's a work, so the like, part-time work that they might be doing whilst they're studying, their family, their children, all those sorts of things. So I think university study opens doors. So many of the degrees that we offer at Murdoch University have what we would call work integrated learning. So the opportunity for engaging with employers in a practical real world experience as part of your degree study. Now, every student has access to this during their study. Some of them will take it seriously. Some of them will take it less seriously. So it really comes down to the individual student and determining what you want to get out of your study remembering that you're investing in your degree this is you're putting money towards an investment so you want to make sure that your investment returns the best dividend it possibly can so you need to put yourself out there so that's taking advantage of all of these opportunities that are presented to you as part of your university study so that might be a work integrated learning experience but it might also be out of hours networking. So many of the universities, including Murdoch, will bring the big accounting firms or the big engineering firms 
onto campus to do networking events with students. And for many of these organisations, this is the opportunity for them to meet students who are on the path towards graduating and learn a little bit more about them. But it also gives the students an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the organisation itself. Do they want to go and work for these organisations in a like a summer job or a, a work integrated learning space? So what op it's it's kind of a, a two way street is an opportunity for the employers to talk to the students and get a sense of who they are or what they where they might be coming from or what they might be interested in doing once they graduate. But it also gives the students the opportunity to really develop that experience that they're all craving as part of their study, but they don't necessarily know how to access. So taking advantage of these opportunities is really going to set students up for success, especially if they want to remain in Australia after they finish and they're going to be looking for employment. How do they find those jobs? through these type of connections, that's going to be a really, really important part of your study. Amazing. Yeah, so we already have some amazing tips, you know, ask lots of questions, get prepared with enough time, you know, network, take advantage of all the opportunities that are presented by the university to you. Um, excellent tips, Daniel. Uh, what are the five programs that you would you highlight uh, at Murdoch? Wow, five. Okay, I've got to cut it down. This is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the two that jump spring to mind uh, in our engineering space. Uh, so Murdoch has a very big focus on sustainability um, and environmental conservation. So our engineering programs, particularly at the postgraduate level, are heavily focused in that space. So we don't do the traditional engineering, civil, mechanical, um, environmental, that sort of thing. So our engineering programs are focused uh, on renewable and sustainable engineering. So really looking at how we can continue to develop technologies that are going to support the renewable and sustainable industry. So there's uh, things like looking at solar panel technology. Uh, how do we continue to evolve the te that technology? How do we make wind farms more environmentally friendly and sustainable? How do we generate more energy out of those? Battery technology. How do we store all of this electricity for further use, whether it's in the home, in the business, in the wider community? And then autonomous vehicles. So all of the technology behind the drive, like literally driverless vehicles. So one example I use is uh, Western Australia loves to dig things out of the ground. We're a big mining state. So on all of our mine sites, all of the big, all of the dump trucks that drive around, there's no one sitting behind the steering wheel anymore. They're all remotely driven. So we need people who understand the technology behind that. So it's not just about what we are doing in digging things out of the ground, it's how we're supporting the companies that are doing that digging to actually turn it back around and make everything as sustainable and environmentally friendly as we possibly can. So those are two of our uh, engineering programs I'd like to highlight. Uh, from a policy standpoint, we have a number of uh, programs that once again align with that environment, sustainability, conservation sort of element. Uh, so we do a community development and a sustainable development master's program. So these are really for students who are interested in the policy side of things or who want to work in government or with NGOs, looking at how do we continue to push our existing governments? How do we develop policy that is going to benefit the country, the state, the city that we live in to continue to evolve and I guess take advantage of the, the learnings that we are making in that sustainability space. So it's a little bit of a different type of focus. It's not as hands-on as our engineering programs. Um, certainly it's more, as I said, it's very, very heavily policy focused. So for students who are working in local government or have an interest in environment, sustainability, or 
how all of that comes together in the community element element. I think both of those master's programs, community development and sustainable development would be significant additions to a resume, especially if you're wanting to take some of those skills back home to Brazil and try and implement them in your local community. The final one, wow, so many choices. Uh, um, obviously, we have all of our all the business programs. I think probably the one I would I would highlight is our uh, our masters in IT. So we have three specialisations there: uh, data science, um, AI, and then IT management. So we've got three, I guess, different perspectives on where we think information technology is going. Obviously, everyone knows just the growth in artificial intelligence and, and how we utilise that. And we need, we need trained professionals who understand this and can advise uh, companies on how best to utilize that. Cybersecurity um, plays a huge role and we've seen a really big boom uh, in students interested in that particular area. Once again, it's being able to protect your information is hugely, hugely important in, uh, in 2024 and beyond as we continue to, to evolve in, in the digital space. And then IT management, it's it's really what it sounds like. It's literally, how do I take my knowledge of the IT field, but then advance myself in a space that allows me to, I guess, consider from a strategic standpoint, what we need to do moving forward. So less working with the ones and the zeros and more actually looking at from a strategy standpoint, how can I help my company evolve in that space? So those would be the five I think I would like to highlight. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's, there's a wide ranging uh, series of opportunities available. Yeah, and that, that comes to our last question, right, Thiago? You know, yeah, uh, yeah. we're talking to, a, you know, a, a, a true Australian here. So, uh, you know, nobody uh, would be better to answer this question than Daniel. Yeah, all right, Daniel. So the question is pretty simple. What is the Australian lifestyle after all? Being outdoors. Like it's just the Australian lifestyle is outdoors. Like everything that you you see and do is built around being outside, whether that's on the weekend, uh, heading down the beach or down at the local park, having a barbecue with your friends or just sitting around playing a sport outdoors, swimming, on the river, obviously Perth is built around uh, the Swan River. So the water is always a huge part in everything that we want to do. It's also a stinking hot here in the summer. So for many people going to the beach and trying to cool down uh, is a big part of that as well. So I think the Australian lifestyle is very much outdoors. It's, it's built around that. And there are so many things that you can do as part of that outdoor lifestyle. It really just depends on how you want to how you want to engage with that. If you want to go, yeah, if you want to be swimming, if you want to be at the beach, if you want to be hiking in the hills, if you just want to float around in your backyard pool on a, an inflatable raft, that's all part of being out, outdoors. And that's, I think that's, that's really what the Australian lifestyle is. It's friends, family, community, outdoors. All right. Well, this that's just perfect, Daniel. And it, it is the perfect lifestyle, I think, at least for me, uh, Vinny. Absolutely. Uh, it is It is truly amazing. Um, Australia is a very special place and uh, no doubt uh, we we love it. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for for your time, for your tips. You know, it's uh, it's very important for us to inspire people that are willing uh, to take this step and uh, move uh, to Australia to come here and pursue a better career, uh, better opportunities. So I truly appreciate uh, your participation and uh, your time with us today. Look, thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope uh, I hope the yeah I hope the information is useful. Um, and yeah, best of luck to anyone who's thinking about coming out to Australia. It's it's wonderful. You won't you won't regret it. That's it. You won't regret it. Então é isso, pessoal. Terminamos por aqui o Australian Lifestyle de hoje com um grande exemplo de um nativo aqui da Austrália, o Daniel. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, Vini. E a gente se vê numa próxima.
Salve família! Você que quer fazer intercâmbio e curtir o estilo de vida australiano, lembra de se inscrever no nosso canal e acompanhar o Australian Lifestyle Podcast. Ha, falar o que, meu amigo? Vai lá!